When it comes to the tools that I use every single day, in particular for development work, like my terminal and my code editor, I love things that are practical and yet functional. Simple, beautiful, and clean looking, I guess, would be a great way to put it. And so I've gotten a lot of requests to go through Okay, how is my VS Code specifically set up? Why does my terminal look exactly like my VS Code? Questions like that, and I want to dive in and make a video and just talk through it. Now, I'm not going to walk through every single setting because mostly it's not my own to walk through. Most of the things that I've set up within my VS Code setting, I would say maybe 80%, if not more, is all through Caleb Porzio's Make VS Code awesome tutorial, his course. Caleb Porzio is the creator of Laravel Livewire as well as Alpine.js, and I would advise you to buy it, to pick it up. Now, my VS Code, as well as my terminal, Warp Terminal that I'm using, I like to keep the same theme across both of them, just so they look the same while they're on video, but I also just like having a uniform look. So if I change the theme on one, I'm usually changing the theme on the other. And for the past couple of months, it has been the Cat Putchin, I believe I'm saying that, so Cat, Puchin Frappe theme or Frappe or I, I believe it stands for Frappuccino. So Capuchin Frappe. We'll call it that or Frapp. Capuchin Frapp. There we go. We'll go with that. But that's the theme that I'm using for both Warp, the terminal, as well as VS Code. And I don't think there's too much that I'm changing in, within Warp. I'm... Uh, I have like dim and active pane set up. I have the dank mono font. And so that's the font that I'm using on VS Code as well as in Warp. With a similar font size and line height, it's a little bit bigger in Warp than it is in VS Code, but we'll get to that in a little bit. So those are the settings for my Warp terminal. Okay, so now let's jump into VS Code. So you might be thinking, okay, how is it actually looking that way where it's like a little bit cleaner on top and it's not necessarily any kind of like borders around it. That's primarily from the APC Customize UI++ plugin. So I would advise you taking a look at this because it's absolutely incredible. I think there was an older version that Caleb Porzio had linked and set up with his Make VS Code Awesome tutorial, but this is like the newer up-to-date version uh, that has a different name and it's like what everyone is using now. So there's some things to look at from here. Here's how I've set that up, particularly in my VS Code settings. There's a bunch of stuff here. Again, Caleb Porzio's course is going to be the great resource to dive into a bunch of this, but primarily what I am looking for here is the APC settings. And this is what I've modified myself, APC Electron, to change the background, to change the frame, to change the title bar, the vibrancy, as well as the styling of the editor. So APC Customize UI++, the great way to think about this is it allows you to style VS Code as if if you were styling a browser because that's what VS Code is. It's using Electron behind the scenes so you can say, okay, this particular editor and the title and the container and everything like that, you can change what kind of styles it has just with simple CSS. So one thing that I'm doing that I just recently switched is I am changing, let's see, I am changing the font for everything to be dank mono. So you see in the, in the sidebar, I actually didn't have this. So without that, it just changes it to just normal font. Same thing with up here. I love having it all in one font. I think that's a nice little touch that I just added maybe a month or so ago. And I absolutely love it. So that's the biggest thing. The plugin for APC Customize is the one to look at. And I would advise just diving into maybe some other people's custom JSON settings that they have for that. There's a bunch on GitHub and in different blogs and stuff like that. But also make it work with your particular theme. So anything within the APC Electron settings is going to require a complete start of VS Code. Anything in the style sheet, things for the cursor, you can see here that's like that purple cursor that's happening. Then I don't have a purple cursor anymore. It's stuff like that that you can easily change with just modifying the settings. This purple cursor is one that I believe Caleb Porzio mentioned in his course. So that is primarily the gist of everything style-wise. So we are using, like I said, the Capuchin Frap theme for icons. We are using the Capuchin Frap icons. So pretty standard across the board. I love this style. Before I was using for, for color theme, I was using the Natty theme, and that's one that Kayla Porzio uses, and it looks really similar to Livewire mostly, but I have found that the 
wrap theme from Capuchin is really easy on the eyes. I really enjoy using it. Okay, now I would say that's pretty much it for when it comes to it. Just use Caleb Porzo's course and use APC Customize UI Plus. But there's a couple of different things. Within Caleb's course, a lot of the things that you'll dive into is just settings to make things easier. So I love having the sidebar on the right and uh, some of the settings that we use in the course that Caleb has just naturally progressed onto a lot of people like myself is uh, command K and then you have B to like swap to the browser. Then you have command K X to swap to extensions. And I, those are usually the, the only, those are usually the only two that I pretty much use. You could use any kind of like version control if you wanted. Uh, I don't really use version control in my VS code. I usually just pop open this up and down. So command K B command K E to go to editor for terminal, it's just command T. And those are usually like the main two commands that I use while browsing around VS code. One another thing that Caleb's course kind of talks through is having the ability. I like things pretty simple when I'm editing and reading, but when I'm doing creating code from the get go, usually I'll go command KK and it just shifts up the code to a completely different font size as well as different paragraphs or different line spacing. I love this to be able to just dive in when I'm trying to emphasize specific parts of the code. So again, all of this is built is this created to be functional for both my own personal programming to say, okay, this is what I use every single day, but as well as this is what looks great on video. So that's primarily a lot of the uh, a lot of the modifications that I've done. So let's look at some of the plugins as well as just things that I do within VS Code that are helpful. So again, sidebar on the right, that's like a something that I enjoy using for extensions. I use mostly the tall stack plugin. So this is the, the plugin folder, the plugin collection, at least as of now, there might be the possibility for official extensions in the future. At least as of now, this is the best extension package folder that I've seen for everything within Laravel, Livewire, Tailwind, as well as Alpine. So Headwind is one that I love within this. It basically uses class sorting as well as any IntelliSense within Laravel Blade because Laravel doesn't necessarily have a prettier option. There is prettier Blade plugins um, that kind of are, are used to add in for each package. But within the VS Code settings, I've found that the Laravel uh, blade formatter is the best option for that. Okay. So now one thing that I've been using recently within the past couple of weeks has been the Tailwind Fold plugin to basically improve what looks like when I'm actually showing specific code. In that sense, when I click into this, then I can actually see the classes. Otherwise, it's just hidden. I think that's very nice for people who are doing any kind of code screencasting, but I think it also just works great while I'm actually writing code because I don't have to look at all a whole bunch of different uh, class styles. I can't remember if this is actually a VS code setting, but you see here on the top where it has the, the latest or the specific, what's it called? The specific div or specific code element that you're in. It has that kind of uh, sticky to the top. I find that incredibly useful as well. I am using for AI, I used to use GitHub Copilot. I since switched to Super Maven, which I have found incredibly useful. I pay for the premium version and it's incredibly fast. Like it's a lot faster than GitHub Copilot and I think a lot more accurate in a lot of things as well because it takes into account the entirety of your code repo. So if I'm in a Laravel application, everything that it suggests is based on my entire code repo. Okay, I believe that's pretty much it for things like packages as well as themes. Obviously, I have a bunch of different themes installed that I've messed around with in, in the interim. Another thing that I love using is the Laravel Pint plugin. So that way, if I was to pull this up and say Pint, so because I'm not in a, let's see, Pint. Yeah, for my document using Laravel Pint. And I actually have that set up to be on save. So when I'm uh, editing something, if I was to format Pint, it automatically edits it as according to those Pint standards. I think this is incredibly useful as well. Other than that, I think that is pretty much it when it comes to my 
VS Code settings. There's not too much that you wouldn't learn if you bought Caleb Porzio's course. And again, this, that's not sponsored by any way, shape, or form, uh, but it was incredibly useful for me to be learning how to work with PHP, with Laravel, with Livewire, with Alpine, within VS Code. I can be pretty much boiled down to that. The tall stack plugin folder, again, that might change in the future. The cat Putchin theme for both the theme and icons, Dink Mono for the font, and then Caleb Porzio's course for everything else in between, which includes APC customized UI plus. But yeah, hopefully that gives you some insight onto how I've set all this up, but really it's just optimized for simplicity, optimized for functionality, and just make things beautiful. So keep creating.